Ted Drain is the national president of the Sporting Shooters Association, an organisation of 45,000 gun owners and the country's largest firearm owners group. He joins us tonight from Adelaide. Simon Chapman is convener of the Coalition for Gun Control. He's associate professor of public health and community medicine at the University of Sydney and Westmead Hospital. He joins us tonight from Sydney. And Danny Walsh is the secretary of the Victorian Police Association. Since joining the force in 1973, he's worked in the drug, armed robbery and homicide areas and has lectured at the Detective Training School and he joins us tonight from Melbourne. Gentlemen, thank you all for uh, waiting there. Uh, Simon Chapman, uh, are you losing a bit of confidence by the, uh, about the, uh, the likelihood of a comprehensive ban on prohibited weapons, uh, given what you've just heard? I think the first thing to say, Maxine, is that uh, if John Howard's minimal plan gets up tomorrow, this will be an historic moment in public health and safety for this country. And I think all Australians will be very, very grateful to Mr Howard and to all the, uh, the police ministers who are gathered around mm. that table. But, but it, do it doesn't, doesn't sound as if that minimum approach... Uh, uh, might get uh, consensus. Well, what concerns me is the uh, the talk of uh, somehow exempting uh, the 22 rifles. I was uh, concerned to hear Mr Stone refer to them as pea shooters. They don't shoot peas, they shoot bullets. And there have been 27 people killed in mass incidents uh, involving 22 rifles. Uh, for example, Bain in New Zealand f uh, shot five people recently. Uh, Fred Dowd shot five people in Campsie uh, in the early 80s in New South Wales. 22 rifles are the most common uh, weapon used to kill people in this country and I think that we need to re be reminded of that when we're starting to address it. Having said that though, I would uh, accept uh, what Mr Stone has said, that there are people who are living in remote areas, uh, that some of the examples that he gave, where I think uh, we would need to, to take those into account. And, and I think that John Howard's plan does uh, show some uh, room to move in there. But if you put all those people together, outback pilots, isolated rural people, people wishing to, uh, to kill feral animals on their property, it's not going to come to an awful lot of people. And I'm very pleased to hear Mr Stone say that uh, there is no place for such weapons in urban communities because that's where the vast majority of Australians live and that's where the vast majority of these incidents occur. Mm. Uh, Danny Walsh, would you be disappointed if those 22s didn't uh, wind up on the prohibitive list tomorrow? Uh, our view is quite clear that, uh, look, you take them off the list, oh, oh, sorry, out of circulation completely. Let's make it uh, an all-up approach. They're gone, they're finished. We don't have to talk about them anymore. Let's come back and then talk about a few more restrictions in the metropolitan areas. Mm. Ted Drain, what about those 22s? I can't believe that <coughs> any government that's trying to get some sort of consensus would, uh, would even suggest that 22 rimfire rifles, the P rifle, not the P shooter, as Simon Chapman said, but the P rifle, would be included this, in this, and self-loading shotguns. There must be a million of those firearms in Australia, a million and a half. And the, the problem of getting them out, of, of even considering that you would be able to take them out of the community after 90 years, have been in existence since 1904. And Danny knows, and Simon Chapman knows, just how many would be out there. Although Simon would talk the number down, I'm sure Danny wouldn't. And you wouldn't but talk it, it up, it, would you, Ted? It's just, uh, well, will you let me talk, Simon? I mean, you've got plenty to say, but you know, give me an opportunity to thank you, if you don't I, mind. I always thought, Mr Drain, isn't the point, uh, not the numbers out there, this is the most popular semi-automatic around. It does a lot of damage. Yes, Why should, should it not be on the prohibitive list? Who, did, who does it do a lot of damage to? To individuals when it's fired at them. Well, and it has, sorry, it has been... Simon Chapman's point was that this, this has been no, used... Simon, this Simon is a Chapman's weapon point, that Simon has been Chapman's used in a number of is, mass killings. Simon Chapman's point is, is based on somebody's research called ALPA. It's a radio announcer from New Zealand. And it's no, no official research in, in Australia at all. But the point is that the whole idea of getting them out of the community is so so difficult uh, that it, it just really takes a lot more consideration than just Mr Howard getting up in Parliament saying this is what we're going to do. Isn't but it so worth a try? He, he Isn't it worth a try? He doesn't have to do it. He's giving it to the states to do and he's in a no-lose situation. If the states can't do it, he said, well, it was the states' fault they couldn't do it. If they do do it, he'll say, well, that was our, our, our uh, uh, way of getting rid of these firearms. If the states make a mess of it, he'll blame the states again. He can't lose. Okay. He doesn't have to spend anything to do it. Da it? Danny Walsh, uh, let me ask you, is this, this a task that's too difficult or can you get, all, get, get your hands on these weapons? We've never ever gone down the track at all by saying, look, this is too difficult to do, therefore we don't do it, no matter how meritorious it is. We've heard in the last two days 
that uh, you don't take these out of existence on the basis that people like them. Well, that's not a very good excuse. It's too difficult. Well, if you don't even start in the first place, it will always be too difficult. Ted knows that 99% uh, of his membership are law-abiding citizens. And if the law says you've got to hand it in, it's gone, that's it, it's gone. And if they determine that they won't hand it in, that's not what they want to do, well, let them understand the consequences. If the Parliament says illegal, hand them in, and you don't, you pay the consequences. Mr Drain, would you hand your weapons in? Yes, I would. That, that, that's right. Would, your, would, your, right, would your members, would your members hand them yes, in, or I would think, they... I think they would. No, that, well, the ones that, that are our members have already registered their firearms where registration's in place. When we know that there's a million unregistered firearms in Victoria, there's 300,000-odd 300, uh, 300, licence holders in Victoria, but we know there's, well, we think there's a million unregistered firearms. So there's a lot of people out there that haven't. And the point we make is that doing something like this, unless you give the police more powers, and the police want more powers, and that would be, as, as the man in New South Wales said, to search people's homes, on what pretext, I don't know. Maybe they wouldn't want a search warrant. Maybe they'd just want to go in and search. But Ted, hold, on, gave police hold on a minute, power, Ted. Right. Ted, just hold on a minute. We don't need more powers. We can go and obtain a firearms warrant that allows us to force entry into a home and search it. If we reasonably, reasonably believe that there's a, a firearm being held in there against, against the law now, you know that, Ted. But how would you reasonably know when you don't know where they are now, Danny? It's when amazing. It's a million unregistered firearms. It's I mean, amazing. How would you know? It's amazing, Ted, how many people will ring up and they'll put people in who've got those firearms in their homes and we'll take the warrants out and we'll go and get them. Danny, they haven't, done, to stand they back haven't done it up to date. In Victoria, it hasn't been done up to date. Sorry, uh, and you know that it's almost impossible to do it. Simon well, Chapman, would you say a Dobbin system will, will work? I was going to say that, Maxine. I think it's absolutely essential that we don't just uh, content ourselves with passing these reforms tomorrow, but that we see an ongoing program, a high-profile program, whereby people can ring up a confidential number, give information to people, uh, uh, give information to the police about people that they've heard bragging about these guns, about uh, uh, people that they may have lived with in a relationship uh, where the person had a gun threatened with them and, and hasn't, uh, hasn't reported it, hasn't registered it. I think without that, we're going to have a lot of people who are not going to come to this party. I'd also like to say, Maxine, that uh, when Mr Drain gets up here and talks about we this, we that, he's actually talking about a very small minority of shooters. His organisation represents, I understand, only about 40 or 50,000 people in the state, in the country, whereas by his own account there are a lot, lot more than that, and survey after survey have indicated that the great majority of shooters, 70% plus, believe that registration and some of the, the proposals that uh, John Howard's put forward tomorrow are sensible and that they will comply with them. Well, they don't believe it in New South Wales, Simon, because we only have a, a, a small number of people who have actually taken our tutors' licences. But what a wonderful country you want to live in, Simon. What a wonderful country it would be when you're advocating that Australians put in other Australians because they've broken up in a relationship or because they've had an argument with somebody or because they're not happy with somebody, put well, them in. Ring up the police and tell if, them. If it's in the national interest and it may, it may you know, uh, stop an accident uh, or it well, may, Max, it may, it may the, force, some, it may force the, somebody to abide the by the law. Interest, it's within the national interest that cars are made to do the speed limit instead of being made to do 200k. Who would do that? It's within the national interest that people should not get behind the wheel of a car with one drop of alcohol in their blood. Now, I don't drink, so it wouldn't bother me at all, but certainly it bothers those people that do have a glass of wine for dinner. It would bother them. Now, that's in the national Mr. interest, too. Why Mr. don't we Drain, do that? Mr. Drain, I was breathalyzed on the way over here. It was an, a small inconvenience, but it's one that I think many of us uh, feel Why happy to pay. Why don't you advocate pay? that? We, advocate uh, that, Simon. Okay. See how far you all get right, with I, that Gentlemen, we, we're getting off the point a bit. Can Hang we on. come back just a yes, moment? Yes, Daddy Walsh. Mm. Certainly. Look, Ted, I've never heard you in the past denigrate people for being responsible. It happens now that if people are in a relationship that there is a reason for them to draw to the attention of the police or the courts that their partner, ex-partner, neighbour, friend has a firearm and they are concerned about it, they do it now. We don't denigrate them, we applaud them no, for no, it. No, no, look, get it right, Danny. I'm not denigrating people. Anyone that threatens anyone with a firearm deserves all they get from you, the police, the government, the, the courts. They deserve all they get. But Ted, what, come what back. Simon, what, what Simon Chapman is, is, is 
is saying, and he said it the other night on, on television or radio, where, where somebody should dob in somebody they think has a gun or where they believe they have a gun. Now, you know as well as I do that a lot of these, these complaints now, these, these violence apprehension orders, uh, have been malicious that there's well, been complaints made with no basis at all. But and the I whole think point the same is, thing would happen. If the whole point is, Ted, let's be serious about this. Let's be really serious. One ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. We've been trying to find a pound of cure for quite some time now, and a lot of lives have been lost. Yep. And the community is sick to death of seeing the loss of human life. OK, can I just take this one point further, Dan Walsh? Uh, uh, what about storage of weapons? For instance, the Commonwealth paper talks about the desirability of central storage. Now, that is getting guns out of private homes and into, say, some sort of central armory. Now, they do not come down on the side of any prescriptive notion. What's well, your view of this? Well, we, we believe there's a network already there that uh, all it will take is for governments to tap into. We already trust certain categories of people to have firearms, that is, to store them in their hundreds, to sell them, to uh, appraise people of their proper and safe use, and they're licensed gun dealers. Now, if governments were in a position where all they would have to do is expand through to the licensed gun dealer and make it commercially viable for that gun dealer to have safe storage of firearms, especially in the metropolitan area, then if you want to get your firearm, you go down to the licensed gun dealer, that's somebody that the community has already said that they trust, you sign your firearm out, you can go and do your sporting shooting, you bring it back and you sign it back in. You take away the domestic violence aspect of having firearms. Mm, Mr Drain, what would be wrong with that? Well, the, the, the research that I've read on domestic violence is that it doesn't happen instantaneously. It's over a long period that people are abused and eventually it ends in some violence. But I would ask Danny, do, do you in, would, in, would you include that pistols and shotguns and every firearm, Danny? And uh, Every so firearm, Ted. Every firearm in the metropolitan area, yeah. but in the hands of licensed gun dealers, not the police. These are your yeah. own people. We've trusted them. We've given them licenses. We've said that you can deal in firearms. You know full well that they handle them carefully. It is their profession. They know what yeah. it's about, and there are plenty of them around. So it's what safe would, storage. What would prevent me, Danny, from taking a gun out and doing what I needed to do when I had it out? I mean, you know this, this fellow in Tasmania travelled nearly an hour to get where he was going before he committed these atrocities. Now, what, what would prevent anybody doing that? If I can come in there, Maxine, I, I think that that's a, a most sensible suggestion that uh, Danny is making because uh, the great majority of these incidents uh, are impulsive incidents uh, committed often while somebody is drunk, uh, in a fit of pique and so forth. And I'm speaking particularly about gun suicides here, which are 85% of gun deaths in this country. So I think that sort of proposal down the track is something that we really do need to look at in this country. All right, and on that note, gentlemen, I will have to say thank you. Well, we're going to lose the bearer any minute. But thank you all very much uh, for your time uh, tonight. Thank, thank you, you Max.